Should be fun to see it play out. I mean, yesterday's game plan was right up there with the Heimerdinger jungle I cast so many years ago. Meta breaking is awesome. The Galio ban, though, to start things off here for Longjo, I think is super yep. smart because guess what? Even level one, Galio has wave clear, a great 1v2 champion. And when you're lane swapping, 1v2s usually go hand in hand. And the bans should be fairly standard from Gigabyte Marines. The Talia coming in as well, remove that from BDD is very smart. Obviously one of the champions he is amazing on and fantastic for launch. And you think about what she's good at. Talia has the global, the ability to roam top was the core strategy of Longju to help Khan out in the top lane. So Galio gone, Talia gone. They're actually both bans against BDD, even if they're one of these. Galio gone, Talia gone, Jace and Kalista also taken off the table by the Marines, while Lulu and Janna have been removed by Longju as the first pick is Zaya for the Korean representative. That seems very standard. That must be like a Cho'Gath support. <laughs> <laughs> there is always that possibility. An Optimus, of course, <laughs> Obitimus, depending on who you are, could be taking the Karma mid. So who are you? What do see. you say? I say Optimus. Uh, I say Optimus. Come on, Transformers. It's right there. So we get the Zaya as well. Rakan is available and was not taken by Gigabyte Marines. And Rakan is one of these uh, special supports who can be a playmaker, but also build art and sensor. They're fairly rare in the current meta. Most of them are very defensive shielding supports. This guy can engage, and Gorilla wants to engage. And of course, Rakan will be a denial to the Zaya Rakan, the most beloved bot lane in the world. Prey and Gorilla get the lovers bot lane. Not necessarily a common pick for them in Korea, but of course we know the power of Zaya. It was first pick Jarvan yesterday, first pick Zaya, and they get the Jarvan anyway. Definitely a solid first half of the draft for Longju so far here. Gigabyte Marines gonna round out their first half by picking up that Tristana that was almost able to find a pen to kill yesterday. Slightly denied by his own teammate, but maybe he can do it again here today. Yeah, also Tristana is the best available AD carry against Javan specifically. Like not only can you jump out of that Cataclysm, you can also deny he's engaged if you're very quick. So it's a smart choice, but I'm kind of scared to see Longju get Zaya Rakan and the flex pick Jarvan. Like, that's a lot of power picks for these guys. But you look down Gigabyte Marines, and it feels like the end of their draft is more than some of their parts. Even yesterday, we were like, okay, so you're showing us that Galio's going top lane, that's weird. They made a lot of reveals early that didn't necessarily cement the final five. I look at Gigabyte Marines and I say, okay, so far, pushing. Pushing is there in terms of the draft. They play with a very fast pace in the early game, and long as you do as well, so fighting fire with fire is a good choice. All right, going into the second part of the picking phase now with Sejuani, Syndra, Cassiopeia, and Maokai all banned away. Gigabyte Marines have one more to make before giving over the next two picks to Longju Gaming. Picking between a couple of different things here, they go with the Lucian. Cassiopeia already banned away, could have been a pick against Lucian specifically. Famous last words, but maybe the strategy no one saw coming was straight up League of Legends, guys, because so far <laughs> it's dangerously meta on the red side. But we're still again waiting for the jungle pick for Levi, which is the big one. Lucian adds on to your pushing lane sure. part. You just said before here, like normally he pushes every single mid lane early on at least, and especially with Talia already being banned away. I'm I really wonder if we're going to get like a counter jungling pick from Levi that can just abuse these lanes. Throw a name out there to fish here. I mean, so something we have seen from teams with like a lot of pushing lanes, like there are things like mid lane you can play. Kane has been used as well. Oh, 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 oh Kaiser. The karma that was picked up at first is so good at taking these slow melee champions like the Cho'Gath and the Mordekaiser and getting them in there. And you know this what the is cool. You know what the delicious thing is? We had one Mordekaiser in Korea. It was Khan himself playing as a counter pick to the Renekton. This champion works in a 1v2, and I think we're yeah. getting spicy. I, I'm, I'm once again smelling a bit of a lane swap because Cho'Gath, while he's not an amazing jungler by any means because he takes a lot of time before he really comes online, he does offer wave clear in the early game. So if your job is to hold in a lane swap with your top laner, Cho'Gath actually works there. It's not a carry pick for Levi, it's actually completely different. So I, I'm thinking the lane swap for now, Mordek Isaac of course could just take the 1v1 lane. I mean, lane swap has to be on your lips. It is Archie, has played it in Soul It's one of those ones we saw, the Mordek Isaac and the Urgot were the edge meta picks that we thought, what if, what if, what if? The what if starts now. The what if for this game should be absolutely amazing to watch. Mordekaiser is something that no one expected. Well, I'm sure a couple people probably expected we it, but it by and large, yep, we, we did it. see it in solo queue, fair enough. But heading into this game, Gigabyte Marines are not disappointing already as we're loading in.
take to the stage. Only moments remain before the barriers go down on the summoning platforms, and everybody's out to see who will reign supreme between Longju, the current champions in Korea after winning the summer split, and the Gigabyte Marines. And now we get Levi on Chograth. We said in Champ Select, this is not the, the big carry jungler. Yesterday, he had the Nocturne, and it was fantastic to watch him, you know, double jungle early, rush to level six, and have this super, super carry performance. It's gonna be different. And let's talk about how long you should approach this, because we watched yesterday a 4.5 point defense very defensively. Whenever you're against what ifs, I really like barreling in as five. It's the same as if you're in solo queue, you go in as five against, say, a Blitzcrank, expecting an invade yourself. Longju are gonna get extra information, as we had a bit of information about Leva. Yeah, they have to try to get a little bit of control over this jungle. You can see on your screen right now the numbers that Levi put up yesterday. Absolutely insane performance on that Nocturne, thanks to his team giving him so many resources. Longju wants to shut that down this time around. So we are going back to the old lane swap meta, where you used to go in and place this ward all the way at the enemy in hip turret between the tier 2 tower and Hippoton turret right there, simply to spot if someone is moving from base down to this bottom lane. We, we're really old school now. Yeah, What's old they really are going all the way back in time to keep an eye on who's going to be walking down that lane so they can make sure they respond in time. Let's see, this looks like the same kind of start as before where Levi and Archie will double jungle, but Longshu looking... Uh, like a team that wants to steal a blue buff. Longju looking like a team that watched Gigabyte Marine's game yesterday yeah. and knows these kind of tricks. Important point, there was a vision on the blue buff as it was started. There's information to the side of the Gigabyte Marines that this has been taken away. Yes, understand the fundamentals of playing against a different strategy. Cheese, innovation, whatever you want to call it. It's what Longju has been able to do day upon day. All it's right, look at this. Thing. Oh. So we got nowhere in the mid lane with the Tristana. Optimus is going top lane with TP Lucian and the, <laughs> we have a duo jungling happening from the Karma and the Mordecai so, and Levi are now invading the jungle on his own. And ladies and gentlemen, none of those two people you just mentioned have smite. Levi the jungler is invading like you say, so they're trying to find experience wherever they want. For now, Jarvan, of course, is going to be pushed out of lane. Looking at the blue buff, it is going to be smited away by Levi. So Archie is now sitting with 50% experience here. So not all the way to level two just yet, but he has support next to him. So these guys are now playing in the bottom lane together. And remember that Mordekaiser gets the bonus EXP even if he's in a duo lane. It's part of the champion's kit. And then now it's going to be BDD jumped on Levi using the flash. Not quite able to find the rupture. BDD gets himself away, but it's both summoner spells. Yeah, BDD staying towards the bottom side, meaning that there was no chance for Levi to instantly silence him. Meanwhile, Longshu, they want to kill that bot lane. Going for a turret dive, both level one. Here we go. See if they can do it. Gorilla's able to find the knockup. The damage coming out. They grab the first blood onto Archie and make it to Longshu. And that's the counter point. Remember yesterday we saw the attempt at the dive, but it was bot. Longju do it clean. They draw all five. They'll get the turret. There's no reinforcements pre five minutes. So even though Lucian gets some time, they cannot match the pace. And the most important thing here for Longju is the fact they build up this very big minion wave you see on the screen. And as soon as the wave is hitting the tower, they are instantly diving, stopping Archie from getting experience. Teleport comes in from Archie, but now he's found himself in a very rough situation. The turret is gone, Archie is alone, and the damage is there. Prey grabbing himself, kill number two. And just teleporting back in has such a high element of risk. We've seen so many top players in Korea, Huni most famously, camped, and they left the turret. They didn't DPS it as fast as possible. It looks so inviting for Archie to come there. He said, I have the flash, I'll be okay. He was far from okay. He's trying to return to favor here. Khan sidestepping away from the rupture, keeping himself just fine for now. Khan's enjoying that old school lane swap top lane experience as well. Very little CS, having multiple people trying to bother him while he gets the very little that he has available. Not a great game for him, but a fantastic showing from Longju in the bottom so far. And the crazy thing is, this is more of a role swap than a lane swap because there was technically two members with the Mordekas in the bottom lane, but that is technically a dual lane you can actually run. Uh, sadly for... Gigabyte Marines, Longshu understands that when there is a level one Mordekaiser who can't really get to the wave, you can just tower dive and kill him. And consider also that Jarvan went top, got enough experience for level two, and that's when the teleport came in. He's level two Jarvan, he's got the level one Maokai with sapling.
that we saw yesterday. Another crucial factor is we're now going to have a Mordekaiser who's probably going to be pretty slow to get the items going. One of Mordekaiser's big points is the ability to pick up the dragon, get the ghost of the dragon in there. They've already lost their bot lane turret, so Drake control is super difficult for Gigabyte Marines to bring back. Falling behind like this early as the Marines, definitely not where they wanted to see themselves. This is a team that do, does experimental strategies. They go out of their way to come up with different ways to play the game, but those methods can quickly find you putting yourself in a hole if you fall behind. And every scientist knows that when you run those experiments, the first one's not always the one that's gonna hit big. It right. hit yesterday. The second one here is seeming like a bit more of a mulligan. A 2,000 gold disadvantage. Pre five minutes, it might even get bigger here as well. Here's the chase. Gorilla definitely looking to build that lead right now. Cuz coming around as well, takes a big swig out of the keg, throws down another one. Archie trying to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Why Has BDD the heal. Here? BDD's showing up just to make sure he can grab some assist money or make it the kill. No, nope, Cuz looks like he might take it instead, but BDD with the kill. This laning phase is like done already, and we're only like five minutes into the game. We have Zion in the mid lane now, Rise in the bottom lane. Optimus, he's still trying to push this tower, but uh, it's barely taking any damage. You know how we have games where we try to incorporate some information for the viewers at home for solo queue? Uh, so no solo queue game has ever looked quite like this one. No. The laning phase, which can extend in solo queue, was completely absent here. We swapped around again and again. We have a 0-3 Mordekaiser. This has been a barn burn. And I gotta correct you there, Papa's Mason, because I have had solo queue games with the Mordekaiser dying like three, four times <laughs> in the early game. So I've seen some of this before. Uh, also ended up in a loss for the Mordecai, so, and uh, actually right now, it's not looking like a guy who's uh, about to win the game. Optimus with a nice flash away from the knockup from Gorilla, who tries to come top to help alleviate some of this pressure on Takan. Knocking that summoner spell off of the Lucian may open up opportunities here in the future. For now, it's still a long Longju game. Four to zero over the Marines, two and a half thousand gold up. I just don't know what Gigabyte Marines has to do to get themselves back into the game at this point. It's looking pretty dire. Yeah, exactly. Like when you have these very special, unique strategies, you rely a lot on the early game to go your way. That's kind of where you're surprising people, because once you get to late game, it's a standard game. They, that will not be different. The fact that Geekwag Marines have not managed to actually get ahead now and just fallen really far behind, means that we're now playing on Longshu's turn. And there were a lot of criticisms about Fnatic yesterday, saying, oh, they were surprised by the lane swap. Sure, their setup around the lane swap seemed a bit late, but they seemed to know what to do. Dive bot lane, try to punish the two members there. The extra very we saw from Longshu was them actually invading for those super deep wars, 2015, 20, early 2016 style. That was kind of the capper. It gave them the extra information. They executed cleaner. And this could have been yesterday with Fnatic and Gigabyte Marines, but just ends up being Longshu doing it better here and reaping the rewards. You've got to respect Longju for doing their homework on this one too, saying, hey, look, Gigabyte Marines, they like to play this really weird lane swap throwback. We need to be prepared for it. We need to get those. I like down. to think that the coach has kept consistent notes for the last three, four years and just tabs back through, gets back to 2015. <laughs> ah, okay. But you notice this, it happens to say when Evelyn comes back into the meta, people forget, wait, you can ward cast, not just control wards to go along to your sides. And the same thing rings true when the lane swap meta, which Gigabyte Marines solo are trying to bring back, comes explodes back into favor. It's nicely done there. It's Optimus is here, but so is Levi. Oh, two versus two. Make it a three versus two. Optimus now going to be the one who's caught out. Ignited might be brought down here. Knockup going to be dodged away from, but Khan still got the dunk, grabbing himself the kill. Levi just going to have to back away. Cuz was there for the reinforcements. Five and no. Now the kill score. Things looking rough to this year. Yeah, we definitely see Longshu with uh, great decision making here. Very quick on these calls, knowing exactly how to punish and obviously some mechanical plays going in their favor. Right there, Optimus needs to be able to dodge the knockup from the Java, and if he wants to actually try and take this fight, side of him didn't happen, and that is one of the reasons he went down. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the Mordekaiser is farming. Uh, he is sitting with 60 CS, so it's not terrible in terms of their creep score, but. Uh, <laughs> 0-3 is kind of rough. The itemization is going to be interesting. I imagine Rylai's and then just situational is where he'll go. It's always kind of been the Mordekaiser item. Post rework helps with the ghost of the Drake that, okay, they're probably not set up to take. And now we see oh. some damage bot lane and gorillas here again. I don't know how well this is going to end for Archie. Again, taking a lot of damage there from BDD. Forced to back himself up. 0-3 and 0 on the Mordekaiser so far. I also love that Gorilla is like, I'm just going to go Moby Boots really early. This is clearly a game where the laning phase is done. I'm just going to move around as fast as possible. And he's in every single lane. Like, 
So this is a play from top here. Optimus needs to be able to dodge this knockoff here from Khan. He gets actually hit by it. So now he's stuck in place taking even more damage. And he flashed from the previous gank, you'll remember, when he flashed with the culling up. So Khan dunks him down. Somehow this game has become a hodgepodge of something from every single season. I mean, the, the pure roaming from level one was kind of a season one, season two oh, strategy. Oh, yeah. Throwback to Heart of Gold and Philosopher's Stone. You buy the gold generation items and you walk around the map from level two. Well, he's got the gold generation. He's got the fast boots. And, uh, yeah, trying to make plays wherever he goes. It's kind of a counterpoint to yesterday where he kind of had to sit and lay in his karma and die repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> also, yesterday, Gigabyte Marines in that Fnatic game, like, they got so much gold, it was actually insane how quickly they managed to build up this huge lead in that game. At 15 minutes, they had 28,000 gold, and the average every other team doing that day was 23,600. So it was insane how quickly they took down towers, got kills, and then stacked up items, especially for the Nocturne and the Tristana. And that's kind of the takeaway here, is that's everything. That's even the minion kills, because the Tristana was free farming as well. So getting that much collected gold is just very difficult to do, unless you really play around maximizing the early game. Yeah, the reason we show this now is to Kind of contrast of it to, yeah, to this game being, well, Gigabyte Marines have not been able to get the same kind of start, are not going to be able to get the same amount of gold. And just look at the pace of the game right now. This isn't that high-powered, high-octane, super-hectic type of style that Gigabyte Marines likes to just thrive in. This has been slowed down now by Longju to the point where they're in control. Gigabyte Marines doesn't feel as comfortable taking the driver's seat on this one, and it's just relaxed to a more comfortable pace. But remember that Longju, compared to their compatriots, are on the more aggressive side. They will not be giving up Rift Heralds for free if they can help. Let's see what they can do about this one. Rift Herald already now been secured by the Gigabyte Marines, but they've once again found their way onto RG, who's going to be bursted down. Prey grabbing the killing spree on that one. Realm Warp comes in. No way. Yes way. Nope. Not quite. Making me a liar already. Gets himself out. No way he was going to die there. Staying safe. <laughs> that was a bit on the nose. Nice I tried. Was... <laughs> <laughs> Next time. All right. All right. Thanks for calling me out, guys. As keep, Archie keep was dying, real here. You'll, as, you'll get him. You'll get him next time. Bud. As Archie was dying, Crucial Factory did pick up the Rift Toad. It could have gone and been unable to be picked up. Was picked up. There, so at least they have something to show for their death. Oh, oh the teleport. here we go. Teleport coming uh, in. Double TP. Longshu immediately collapsing onto it. Archie looking to get himself out of the way. Harvesters of Sorry keeps him alive for an extra second. Prey going to be going on a rampage. In the back line goes the Cho'Gath, but now he's going to found himself isolated once again by him. Lonesome and deleted by the power of Cuz and the rest of Longju. The dunk comes in, the flashes are forced. Khan gets those summoner spells out as Longju takes a 2-0. Yeah, Gigabyte Marines at the moment, uh, 5k gold down, not picked up a kill, not picked up a tower. We're actually looking at a potential perfect game yeah, for Longju. Bit of fine text that they did pick up a Rift Terror. That was something. Does it's that count, sure. really? Yes, it does for me. Okay. I'm into true perfection. I get to see else okay, biased. What can I say? Oh, my but for God. now, at least, <laughs> on screen, it is a perfect game. As we're going to see the replay, and they really like completing teleports, what I'm learning about the Gigabyte I Marines. Mean, when you TP flank as a 0-4 Mordecai is an illusion, then you know you are trying really badly <laughs> to force a team fight. Sadly for Archie, he just died instantly, as we've seen in this game a few times. Levi as well will go down. That is actually another thing to highlight about Gigabyte Marines comp in this game. They don't really have engage. So if you are trying to play fast and trying to get back in the game by forcing uh, big, you know, skirmishes, you kind of need more engage in your comp. Uh, so it's going to be so difficult to really do anything. And launch to this, look to close out the game as fast as possible. You mentioned Archie going in and just immediately dying. He's 0-5 and 0 on the Mordekaiser now. And we mentioned earlier how Khan was getting the short end of the stick in the lane swap situation. But if you compare these two top laners in this game, Khan's got 30 more CS. He's 1-0 and 3. He's got his tabbies and he's got his Tiamat. While Archie has a completed pair of Mercury treads and a garage sale of tier one starter items. I <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, this is nowhere near viable. I like calling it the random sampler personally. Right, the garage there we sale go. fits pretty well. <laughs> The Rift Herald can be plopped down at some point. That's about the only thing you can cheer for as Gigabyte Marine fans. most valuable item in his inventory. They know Levi's there because they have a ward towards the backside, but they'll continue creeping forward. For now, at least, like you say, the pace lowered a little bit, but the uh, light at the end of the tunnel is uh, definitely flickering for the Gigabyte Marines. Longju so in control of this game. You can see them moving up into enemy territory, setting down the wards so they can make the picks like this cuz a killing spree for himself now. Longju at the moment, uh, kind of just 
Trying to pick up whatever early towers they can. Uh, we got top lane, one going down. Mid lane is still alive, but once you kill the top lane, you can push in that wave and move down to mid after and just put even more pressure. And Prey and Gorilla might look to fight. Prey and Gorilla so strong this game. 4 0 and 2, 0 0 and 9. 100% oh. kill participation okay. for Gorilla this on the is support. Something. As Archie pops the Rift Herald in the bottom lane, looking to get something They're out fighting. of this. They're fighting! Get a Raptor up. Seeing if maybe he can do something about this while Prey fights for the Raptors up in his own side of the jungle. Gorilla being forced to use the Flash as well. And I want to update real quick because we mentioned earlier, last time we saw the Gigabyte Marines, day number one yesterday, 15 minutes into the game, they had 28,000 gold. Today, they have 20,000. That's 8,000 less than day one, 3,000 less than the average. It's uh, Longshu sitting above the average today with almost 28,000 here at 15 minutes. Ton of gold on every single member here. And Ready to take whatever fight they want because every single champion on their side is just stronger. And there's no completed items really to speak of. Gigabyte Marines, I guess a Cinder Hulk is really all you're talking about. Does that really count? Uh, you're gonna have to start looking <laughs> and being half truths and trying to make things look good for Gigabyte Marines because Tony has been through a, a bit of a horror movie here for them. Haven't lost all their structures yet, but haven't claimed any of their own. It's a good positive, you know. Uh, haven't tried. lost a tower yet. I'm reaching to Vicio. <laughs> All right, Prey in the mid lane, continuing to apply the pressure. And as these item leads that we're mentioning start to become more and more prevalent, as you can see the Rod of Ages and the Essence Reaver completed on the carries of Longju Gaming. As those advantages are built, Longju is going to get more aggressive, like you talked about, Papa Smithy. This team will eventually say it's time to pull the trigger, and when that time comes, Gigabyte Marines will be in trouble. Absolutely, and you know, coming back to what Deficio was saying, okay, they don't have engaged, so what does Gigabyte Marines comp do? They're really good if they get that Drake, if they set up for a siege with a Dragon, with double AD carry, Karma poke, and movement speed, choke out the poke around, that works, but okay, you need gold to do that, they certainly don't have that. The other problem right. is, you need the vision as well, Deficio, you need to be able to ward your side right now. They have lit up, Longju I'm speaking about, the red side jungle, and there's just no way to set up for any sort of siege on the side of Gigabyte Marines. Exactly, because before you can even get the vision, you gotta be able to push out your lanes. And then Gorilla could be there with a stun. Be there. Anyone can honestly be there from Longshu's side. They have so much engage with their team here and so much damage at this point in the game. So every single step you need to take before you can actually secure this objective for the Mordekaiser is unavailable for Gigabyte Marines in this game. They can't even push the lanes out. And talking about Gorilla and what Gorilla has done this game, an interesting point that I've noticed, and it goes back to a bit of what you were talking about in Champion Select Officio, the Ardent Sensor possibility on Rakan, and we know that Karma's a champion that uses the item as well, but just because this game has been so unorthodox and everything has been so upside down, neither one of these champions have found it appropriate to rush that and item. I love that observation because because the laning phase ended pre-five minutes, we're going to pick up the Moby Boots and be able to roam and get the kills. It's 100% kill for space, Secret Agent Gorilla at 009, but the value of a sight stone when the laning phase is over super early it's actually really really high because you don't have the minions giving you all the information there was actually a lot of incomplete information and sight stone trumps the art sense 9-0 Longju gaming with an 8,000 gold lead 18 minutes into the game Levi seeing if he can grab a rupture onto the bottom lane of Longju but they've both got quick enough feet to just walk right out of the way of that one no fear on these guys just because of how far ahead they are. Even if you don't have the flash up on Gorilla, you're not really worried at this point. Prey's got everything. I just don't see a world where they're able to be pushed back at all. I mean, you kind of look at the map, and usually you want to draw a diagonal line where one team owns the side. Right now, the diagonal line maybe includes minions pushing into the secondary turrets. It certainly doesn't include either side of the jungle for the Gigabyte Marines. So they're being starved out, even though Longshu is doing nothing fast. But don't worry, Papa Spiffy, because Archie finally has an amp tone. So he's getting closer hey. to a real item. He's sitting on 1800 gold. He's going to get a Rylize when he goes back to base. He's on his way. This is the first crucial power spike for Archie. He's walking to it as well. He's actually walking <laughs> on it. Taking his time. I'm getting there eventually. If you, if you haven't gotten it yet, you can definitely spare a few more seconds. <laughs> well, he finally gets it. 19 minutes into the game, the Mordekaiser has his first non-boots item completed. Maybe that'll make him a little bit better off, but he's still got one <laughs> hell of a mountain to climb if he wants we, to stand toe-to-toe. As toe -to -toe. the viewers can uh, hear, we are trying very hard to find the positives here for we are. Archie specifically on this Mordekaiser. Usually glass half full play-by-play -play or enough isn't followed by rip-snorting laughter, <laughs> but that's where we're at right now. Sorry, guys. At this point in time, 
you've just got to laugh through the pain if you're Gigabyte Marines because things have just gone from bad to worse. Now they lose their fifth turret of the game. They're down 10,000 gold, and Baron will be live in 25 seconds. And this, of course, is what will happen if you are like a boomer bust team who is trying to have right. these new strategies that no one else is using. Some of them might work. Some of them will definitely not work. And in this game here, well, Longshore are just too good of a team uh, to actually get too surprised. And Prey might go down. Prey with a nice flash over the wall to keep himself safe. The root comes out, but the shutdown still comes through for oh. no way. Getting Gigabyte Come Marines back. on the board. There you go. Everything starts it's with one. Now. It all starts with one, Deficio. But now, the comeback to the comeback as Levi finds himself rooted up and bursted down. Can't quite take Con with him. BDD still looking to grab some more damage. Optimus thinks the TP in as BDD a bit too far forward. He's gonna be forced to flash away. Archie chasing after him. Harvesters of Sorrow on, but the duck comes out. Optimus gets taken down, and BDD goes on a killing That's spree. What the fruit on the like. Archie. Rylize isn't gonna do a thing. Zero and six as Longshu goes up to 12. That's what 11,000 gold lead at 20 minutes looks like. You have so many items that Prey going down is by no means an abortion of any of this aggression. They turn onto the Baron, 20 minutes 30. It's not gonna be a contest for Gigabyte Marines. Longshu knows this is pretty much free money. They're doing pretty much nothing to secure the back end of the pit because they know that they don't have to worry about it. The whole jungle is warded. They've done the proper steps to prepare. The Dusk Blade first completed <laughs> item on Khan's Jarvan, by the way. This is what happens when you piss off the man who plays carry tops all yep. the time and make him sit under his turret all game. You're going to pay for it. Right. Now we don't have to talk about any sort of perfect game ramifications because Prey, he took too many liberties. He didn't have complete vision over both sides. He went down, but that didn't dissuade long. Uh, he is an ex inexperienced player. So he was obviously just overextended there. <laughs> Happens for the rookies. Let's see in this fight. Gigabyte Marines after the one kill uh, on to Prey. Kind of ran out of cooldown. So while Archie did actually join with that crazy Rylai Scepter here, he's not really able to deal enough damage right now. Can't with that Dust Blade. Uh, he's in top lane now. Yeah, Optimus is feeling exactly what that Dust Blade is for. <laughs> Killing spree there for Khan as he gets the solo kill onto his opponent. 3, 0, and 5 on this J4. By the way, those are the ingredients to a Ghost Blade now as the next item he completes. He's not worried about anything else. Just that lethality, that straight 100 to 0 from the first. Of course, if you get the first item with lethality, you gotta get the second one as well. The enemy team is... Not exactly stacking a lot of armor uh, at this point and in the, the game. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's Cho'Gath from the jungle. He's not going to hit the super tank we see from top lane anytime soon. No. There's a Rylize, but nothing else to talk about from Archie. So you're basically one-shotting everyone on the side of Gigabyte Marines. And uh, any more items, and that's basically all five. Yeah. Oh, by the way, knock, knock, bottom lane. It's Longju as oh. Khan goes on a rampage top side. We don't even get to see it because he kills Archie too quickly. <laughs> Four, zero, and five on the Jarvan. The bottom lane inhibitor turret falls. The inhibitor will go shortly thereafter. They don't even care about going to the other lanes because the Gigabyte Marines can't walk safely through the middle of their own base, and Longju will look to end. There's no TP from Khan, though, so he's stuck in base. It's only 4 vs 4 up here, and uh, Longju decides to step away for now, at least. Oh, never mind. Levi, Levi made the mistake of walking up to the wall of his own base! Now he's gonna pay for it, taken out. Longshu are just so threatening at this point. They're here to win and get out, not wasting any time. The fastest game of groups yesterday, I believe it was 24, 26 minutes, something around that, as Gigabyte Marines beats Fnatic. And they might just lose that quickly to Longshu here today. 23 minutes in, the team is on to the second inhibitor turret. No contest on that one. Second inhibitor probably won't tell a different story. Baron up minions now in the bottom lane. One minute left on Baron buff. Longshu, five men strong. Looking to end for real this time. Archie, the flash will keep him alive for now. Losing a good chunk of his HP though. Nexus turret number one gone. Number two, quickly gonna be telling the same story. No way, has to jump out of the way as Archie is rooted and taken down. The damage coming in from Khan. Levi, the next target, not quite gonna be hit by the knockup but Longshu has their sights set on the remaining members. Gorilla finally falls to Levi. Optimus tries to escape back into his own fountain as Longshu pad the stats, take down the Nexus, and defeat the Gigabyte Marine. Fastest game of Worlds, and when you go big or go home, as the Gigabyte Marines are so wont to do, this can be the reality. They come crashing down back to Earth. They beat Fnatic, they felt so good about that yesterday. But after that, here we see that unfortunately, the other side of the coin is that Longju were able to <laughs> scatter up the level one, and from there, it was only going one way. 